These are calibration cubes, probably one of the most 3D printed parts ever. Yet I think they are one of the worst and even harmful parts for your machine that you can print. In this video I'll show you why calibration cubes are bad, how you properly tune your 3D printer's dimensions and how accurate the machines I have in my studio are. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Create the professional website that you've always wanted or replace your old one that you're actually embarrassed of. Go to squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code CNC Kitchen for 10% off. After I recently finished building my new Retric Vico 3, I thought it would be a great test for the machine to print the electronics housing for my new precision oven for temperature tests. Unfortunately, after the first print, I noticed that the holes I had properly measured didn't fit the electronics and the lid didn't fit the base. At that moment, I realized I forgot a crucial step when setting up a new, especially self-built machine, and this was doing the size calibration. Many, and in my opinion, way too many, use one of these calibration cubes for that step. Over the years there have been dozens of different variants of a calibration cube popping up and most of them have one distinct feature. They are cubes, usually marked with letters for the axis and are 20 or 30 millimeters wide. You're supposed to measure them in order to figure out if your machine prints dimensionally accurately or not. And this is exactly the problem. If you have ever used a calibration cube to tune your steps per millimeters, there is a big chance that you made its accuracy worse instead of better. Hate me for this take, dislike, unsubscribe or even leave a shitty comment, I don't care. I'm convinced this is one of the worst things in 3D printing that you can do. There are some legitimate uses for calibration cubes, yet not size calibration, and I'll touch on that later. The accuracy of a 3D print is affected by a ton of different factors. The obvious is how accurately the print head can move to a certain position, and this is what people often think they need to tune. What many don't realize is that the dimension of a part is only partly impacted by the accuracy of the print moves and also a result of how wide an extrusion gets squished and how much the part shrinks due to thermal contraction. In order to understand why I think people make a mistake when using calibration cubes, let me quickly explain the process. So the common calibration cube has a nominal edge length of 20 millimeters. When people print it, they take calipers and measure how wide it is in reality and then adjust the steps per millimeters. So basically how much the stepper motor needs to rotate for a millimeter of movement of the print head. Once they adjusted this value in their firmware, they print the cube again and are happy if it measures the exact dimensions. Yet what many don't realize is that calibration cubes have some major flaws, which makes measuring their outer dimensions useless and even wrong for scaling. Let's start with the most obvious and this is that regardless of which orientation you're measuring the cube, your measurement is flawed by either the elephant foot the cube might have or over extruded corners. The next problem is that if you're just measuring outer dimensions, these are highly affected by the amount of over or under extrusion that you're having. And finally comes the measuring error. Measuring always comes with a tolerance, which can be the result of imprecise measuring equipment or even just the amount of pressure that you're applying on a tool or your part. A measuring error of 0.1 mm on a 20 mm block is a 0.5% error. The same measuring error on a 100 mm part is only 0.1%. So the smaller the dimensions that you are measuring, the higher the impact if you measure something wrong. The 20 mm calibration cube is rather on the small side and a 0.1 mm measuring error is completely normal on cheap calipers or if you measure incorrectly. The last big letdown of calibration cubes is that even if you were able to use them to get your X and Y dimensions right, they don't tell you anything about an often overlooked flaw of 3D printers. And this is skew. If you have a skewed printer, this means that the X and Y axes are not perpendicular to each other. This can be the result of tolerances, bad assembly or even just unequal belt tension. This is mostly irrelevant and even unnoticeable if you mainly print aesthetic parts. But as soon as you print a box with a lid, you will notice that the top and the bottom don't fit nicely onto each other if the axes are skewed. Measuring skewness is pretty simple by measuring the diagonals of a square. If they are not the same, your printer is skewed. I mean, I'm probably not the first one telling you that many printers have a way to compensate for that, but did you ever check your machine or even compensate it? 
I was curious myself and tested all the printers I have in the studio and we'll take a look at the results later. So how can we get around the letdowns of calibration cubes and even do our skew calibration at the same time? You can find several different solutions for that on the typical model repositories, yet the one I've been using for a while is the so-called Califlower from YouTube colleague Adam of Vector3D. Yes, this is a paid download, but what you're getting is not only the STL for printing, but also a super convenient spreadsheet that gathers your measurements and does all of the calculations for you and even creates the inputs to compensate for the deviations in your firmware or slicer. So let's use my new Redrick Vico 3 as an example, which I just built and didn't check for proper dimensions and skew yet. Before I printed the cauliflower, I made sure I properly tuned my filament profile. So I figured out the optimal extrusion temperature, adjusted the flow percentage, tuned retractions and figured out the optimal pressure advance value. With everything set up, I then printed the calibration flower, which takes around an hour to finish. Adam, who designed the cauliflower, put a ton of thought into the design, so that the measurements that you are taking are precise and repeatable as possible. Obviously the part is bigger with nominal dimensions of 150 millimeters, so measuring errors are less severe. Then the locations where you're measuring are on flat faces, so no text or over extrusion on corners will impact your measurements. There are chamfers on the top and the bottom to avoid an elephant foot or the impact of overly squished upper layers. And finally, every dimension is measured as an outer and an inner dimension. By taking the average of these two measurements, you get rid of the effect from over or under extrusion. For for example, over extrusion would make the outer dimensions bigger and the inner dimensions smaller, but the average, so basically the middle, will stay the same. Also make sure to use proper calipers. I love my Mitsutoyos with a thumb wheel that helps me to apply consistent pressure during measurements. Link in the description by the way. Make sure that the calipers are always parallel to the part and maybe even wiggle a bit to find the sweet spot. There are 10 reference dimensions on the part. And in order to reduce the effect of measuring error, you should measure each dimension three times. This takes maybe five minutes, which leaves you with a calculation of your X and Y error, as well as the skew of the axis. If you have used Adam's cauliflower before, you might notice that mine looks a bit differently. This is because I initially had the idea to make something myself because I wasn't satisfied with the way the old calibration flower had to be measured. Yet instead of reinventing the wheel and ripping off a YouTube colleague, I rather decided to chat with Adam so that he could improve his design. Adam had a pretty rough last year with a cancer diagnosis, so every purchase helps him get back on track again. Whereas on the old one it was a hit or miss placing the calipers correctly, there are now stops on the new design that will make sure that you always measure at the right location. If you bought the old design you can download the new one with the same link you initially got. If you have a cool idea for an innovative product just like Adam had with his cauliflower, if you want to share detailed written guides or just show off your portfolio, you should definitely have your own website. I often hear that people are scared of making their own web presence because they still think it requires programming skills or knowing what an FTP is. But no, these times are long gone. Also thanks to services like today's video sponsor Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one solution for professionals, hobbyists and everything in between. Their intuitive online editor makes creating your personal web presence easier than creating a PowerPoint. Simply choose one of their professional templates to start with and customize them to your needs. Add content like text, images or videos just by the click of a button and Squarespace makes sure that everything looks and feels cohesive, regardless of the device your visitors use. I highly recommend trying them out totally risk-free at squarespace.com slash cnckitchen. And if you're happy and ready to launch, you can get an additional discount by using code cnckitchen for 10% off. I've been using Squarespace myself for years for my own website and am every time impressed again how smooth it is to add new content or even run an online store. Squarespace is also great for online creators because it allows you to present your content in the right light, helps you to collect donations and even enables you to set up a members only area for exclusive content. Make the website you've always wanted or replace the old one you're actually embarrassed of by going to squarespace.com slash cnckitchen for a free trial and an additional 10% off with code cnckitchen.
So my measurements told me that my X and Y dimensions are around 0.3 to 0.4% off and the skew of my axis is 0.4 degrees, which is quite significant, which also explains why my top and bottom housing didn't properly fit. My red rig runs Clipper, where compensating the skew is really simple by just adding a line to the configuration file, sending two commands via console and adding a command to the start and ng code. If you run RepRef firmware or can compile your own Marlin, there are also the commands generated in the spreadsheet. If you can change your firmware like on the Bamboo Lab machines or even the new Prusas, if you don't want to void your warranty, it's tougher, but there are SKU compensation add-ons for Octoprint or G-code post-processing scripts that you can use. If you want to fix this problem properly, you might even want to try to square your machine manually. Next might come a little controversial topic. My measurements told me that my part was around 0.35% undersized and even the spreadsheet suggests the steps per millimeter adjustment. And here comes my controversial opinion. If you only print one material type, go ahead and change your steps per millimeter if your machine allows it. But for anyone else who regularly works with different materials, I'd rather define a scaling factor for each material that you can use. To demonstrate what I mean, I printed the cauliflower on my red rig in PLA, PETG, ABS and ASA and even though the skew was always relatively small in terms of measuring tolerance, because skew is a property of the printer and not the material, the part shrinkage was different. I had to compensate 0.35% for PLA, 0.4% for PETG and around 0.7% for ABS and ASA. This shows that not the machine is printing incorrectly, but the materials are just shrinking and resulting in wrong dimensions. Cura and Orca slicer have a material shrinkage factor for that. In most other slicers you have to scale your part manually, if it's something where you need to get your dimensions right. After adjusting your skew and compensating for shrinking, it's a good idea to print another cauliflower to check how good the part dimensions now are. Due to the tolerances and simply the complexity of a printer, material and environment system, you can't expect to have perfect dimensions. But from my experience, running the calibration cycle reduces your machine error by around an order of magnitude which is usually good enough. I think for most applications a dimensional accuracy of one tenth of a millimeter or four thou is precise enough. I was curious, I have a bunch of printers here in my studio and at home and wanted to find out how good in terms of dimensions they all were. One of them is also really special in that regard. The good old Prusa Mark III is the only printer besides the Mark II I'm aware of that does automatic skew calibration by measuring special points on the bed. But is this just a gimmick or does this make the machine dimensionally more accurate? Let's start with size. First things first, all parts came out undersized, which also indicates that the deviation in size is primarily thermal contraction. Yet there were still significant differences with some parts coming out of the machine almost spot on and others already 0.4% smaller. I first thought this might be due to the different brands and colors of PLA that I used and I reprinted them all in the same green voxel PLA, yet the size difference was still there. I can only suspect that some might already compensate for shrinking in their steps per millimeters. The other interesting part to see was that the X and Y error was not always the same, so a global material scaling factor might not work perfectly on all printers and in these cases adjusting the steps per millimeter or unevenly scaling your STLs in the slicer might be the better way. I can only assume that the reason for this is uneven bell tension, but maybe you have a thought as well. Size can be easily compensated for, so the more interesting metric was the skew of my machines. Whereas I still had 0.4 degrees of skew on my uncalibrated rhetoric, I was able to completely get rid of it by using the cauliflower. My A1 Mini, the P1S Prusa Mark III, the A1, the Artillery Hornet, the Prusa XL, my old X1 and the GD X-Max 3 only had a very insignificant amount of skew. Starting with the Mark IV, the skew got worse from 0.05 degrees to almost 0.1 degrees on my older X1 and over 0.3 degrees on my Snapmaker J1S to finally a staggering 0.55 degrees on my transparent Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. If you use the whole print bed of the A1, this would be a 1.7 millimeter shift on the part. Yet I have to say that my transparent A1 Mini is a special pre-production unit that might not have seen the QC of the retail printers, especially looking at my other A1 Mini that was basically not skewed at all. But have you ever measured yours? Looking at these results begs the question, which skew is still acceptable? I mean, if you print primarily aesthetic parts and nothing functional that needs to be assembled, you don't really need to care about this property. 
For everyone else, it of course depends on the application, but everything below 0.1 degrees seems to be normal, but skew calibration can get you even closer. I was kind of cruel to the classic calibration cube in the last 15 minutes, but in the end I think there is still use for it, and this is in judging the quality of your printer or material with a very compact part. Flat surfaces tell you something about extrusion consistency or vertical line artifacts. Corners show if pressure advances tuned properly. The upper surface will show over or under extrusion, and the latter will tell you something about cooling and overhang performance. Many other designs will even include more tests, but I hope I was able to convince you that you should never use them to tune the dimensional accuracy of your printer. There are better ways. And something you might not even have considered is that whereas calibration cubes are rather booby traps if you don't properly dispose of them, the cauliflower at least makes a unique coaster for your next party. But what are your thoughts on this? Was this totally new to you? Do you still think this is BS or did I speak from your heart? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye!